Those three protesters found guilty on charges of disrupting Attorney General Jeff Sessions' confirmation hearing. Two of them were dressed as Ku Klux Klan members. They all face up to a year in jail. One protester says her attorney will file a motion to have that verdict dismissed. So joining us now with more on this, Brian Claypool, criminal defense attorney, and Emily Campagno, former federal attorney and former criminal defense attorney. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks, Pat. So, Emily, where is the line drawn between lawful protest and disrupting a proceeding? Right, well, this specific statute, this disruptive and disorderly statute, is what's known as a catch-all statute. So it actually means that a whole host of unruly or obnoxious behavior can be construed as such and fall into that category. So here, for example, one of the pro protesters said, oh, it was an inaudible gasp, it was a mere laugh, and I couldn't help myself. Well, clearly that was construed as disruptive because a guard approached her, and then she became quite audibly disruptive as she was protesting being brought out. So the nature of the statute is such that there can be a whole host of behavior that falls onto it. And I think more importantly, it speaks to the respect of that seat. So the fact that this protester came in with, as she stated, an intent to be a symbol of dissent that A, on its face violates the law of unable to protest or demonstrate in a Capitol building, and B, speaks to the fact that she wanted to be disruptive. She earned a seat somehow in that room and did not respect the austerity of those proceedings, regardless if, as she said, she claims they were laughable. All right, Brian, we mentioned that one of the protesters is filing a motion to dismiss. What is the basis for that, and do you believe it has merit? Well, I don't know the basis of it, but I'll tell you what, I was going to wear a pink tie this morning, but I changed it to a blue tie because I don't want to be arrested for wearing the wrong color at a proceeding. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me tell you this, Patty Ann, I, I, I think this was a politically motivated prosecution. I think the right thing to have done here was to go up and talk to that woman and say, you need to be quiet. If you're not going to be quiet, then you've got to leave this proceeding. Now, her gasp, her, 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 her response was no longer than a cough. So I can't imagine now that we live in a society that where you go to a legislative proceeding now and you even, you even make any kind of remark and you're now prosecuted for a crime. This was not an ongoing disruptive proceeding. And I beg to differ with Emily on one point. This woman didn't go there wanting to disrupt things. It's only when they came to get her and they were dragging her out of the proceeding that she became disruptive. I think it's a waste of taxpayer money. All right, it's interesting. We'll see where it all goes. Uh, we have to move on now. Uh, sec second topic, a federal court has revived a lawsuit accusing U.S. Airways, which is now part of American Airlines, of refusing to refund a passenger's baggage fee, even though her bag arrived a day late. Brian, you say this is a straight breach of contract. Explain. Oh, absolutely. When you pay a fee to have your baggage carried on an airline, there, there's, a, there's what's called a condition precedent to the contract. What that means is the airline has agreed to carefully transport your baggage from one location to another and get it to you on time. The fact that the airline did not do that means they have breached an agreement. Now, if I was that person, look, if I have my Garmin bag not delivered to me on time for a day, I'm not only gonna sue for, for the fee I paid, but if I had to go out and buy clothing, go buy another suit and tie to come on Fox, I'm going to go after the airlines for the cost of that clothing, too. And I'll bet you anything I could recover it. Well, it's something that happens quite a lot. So it's an interesting question. Uh, Emily, could the airlines end up on the hook for all kinds of delayed baggage if this case ends up being successful? Right, you could argue that. And the nature of this case, this was a procedural decision. So for viewers moving forward, what's important to note is that now, yes, you can sue airlines under state law, and really it would be at the class action level that it would be economically viable. Because obviously, as Brian says, of course you can sue for your refund and for any costs associated with that. But in terms of balancing out the fees of attorneys and the court fees, it really makes sense on a class action level. And it's important to note too that airlines can be on the hook regardless if they state in that contract a remedy. So so if an airline merely promises specifically, we will have your bag to you in a timely manner and does not cite A, or we will give you 25,000 miles, for example, they can still be on the hook for it. So to me, it's a win for consumers. All right. Emily Campagno, Brian Claypool, thank you both so much.